Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today, we're going to be taking a look at identifying snow buntings and long spurs. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be looking at snow buntings and long spurs in DuPage County. So, typically, when you're out in the winter time and you're uh, scanning roadsides. These are the three characters that you're most likely to come across. So we have snow bunting here, horned lark, and Lapland longspur. And you can see that um, they do share a lot of similar characteristics. Uh, there's really not a lot to work with, especially when you're looking at these birds at distance. And usually at this time of year, they are difficult to approach. We're, we're normally in our vehicles and we're hopefully on a um, road that is uh, rural in nature and you don't have a lot of traffic on, on that road. Uh, then you might stand a chance of getting closer to these birds. But for the most part, you're going to be looking you know, rather distantly at them. Uh, they're all little brown guys working, uh, hugging the ground and working, um, looking for seeds. And typically, this is what you come across. You can see that there is some snow on the ground here. You've got all these birds huddled down in this particular group. We have some horn larks and we have some Lapland longspurs. You can see there's a lot of similarities. Uh, their behavior is very much the same. And we'll have to look closely in order to you know, make some separations. So first of all, let's take a look at uh, their level of occurrence throughout the year. And again, uh, this is based on data that we've collected at Fermilab over the last 34 years. You can see that horned larks are with us all year round. Um, when we get into the summer season or post-breeding post season, it gets to be a little more difficult to locate them, but they are certainly still on site. Um, you can see that you know, all through every single survey period through most of the year, you know, we have these birds available to us. Uh, Lapland longspur and snow bunting, on the other hand, are birds that migrate in. And they're gonna come in in the fall. Typically we see Lapland longspurs come in sometime in October, you know, with us through till the end of the year. Uh, snow bunting, similar occurrence, maybe uh, slightly later. They will be with us all the way through the winter months and we can expect to find them in January and February and even into March. And we historically were finding them in April, but uh, we don't seem to be getting records for them in April any longer. Uh, similarly with snow buntings, we have them in January and February and not so much in March. So um, one of the problems that we have, we don't find these uh, birds in too many locations uh, in DuPage County anymore because we've lost that habitat. They're looking for those wide open rural areas. And some of that exists at Fern Lab. And certainly there are other sites as well, um, but the other sites probably don't have the roadways that Fermilab has, so it's a little more difficult to come upon these birds. Uh, you might get them as flyovers and things I'm, places I'm thinking of would be uh, Springbrook would probably have some, um, and maybe Prattsman Woods has large open areas that might have them. But again, it's a matter of having the right access to them in order to find them. Uh, if you're not finding them on the roadside, your alternative is to be you know, walking uh, ag fields, and that gets uh, pretty tedious because you can walk a long ways. Uh, you'll disturb the birds and they fly even further away, and then you do a lot more walking. So it's difficult to find them um, aside from you know, getting them along roadsides. So here's the first species I wanted to talk about. It's not actually in our uh, heading, but it is a bird that we are going to encounter, and that's the horned lark. So there are some characteristics that would have set this bird apart from the other candidates that we want to talk about today. And one of the things for sure is the fact that the bill is quite different than what we would see on snow bunting or any of the long spurs. It's much narrower and longer than what we see on those species. And you can see that uh, in most plumages, you're going to see a pretty obvious um, yellow throat and yellow supercilium. Then you'll have this black collar and somewhat of a mask going on. You can see it very well on this resting bird here. You know, the black collar is very strong. You can see those little uh, like sideburns coming down. And on this bird, you can actually see the little tufts of feathers that create the horns, which it's named after. You don't often see that, uh, or it can be difficult, I should say, to see that. Uh, quite often they're laying down or you're just simply not close enough to really get a good look at that. In flight, you'll notice that this bird has a very, very uh, dark tail. And it contrasts quite a bit with this very pale brown. So that's a, that's a characteristic that's easy to pick up. When they do fly, they'll, they'll fan that tail out. And it's quite obvious that you see all that contrast. In comparison, we have snow bunting here. And right off the bat, you can see that the, um, 
the bill is, is much shorter and more finch-like on this bird than what we were looking at on the horned lark. And in general, if you look at the face, uh, it's a very plain looking face on snow buntings. And rather than having well-defined characteristics uh, marking up the face, you know, just have kind of like smudges. You see a smudge here and here. You see it likewise on, on this individual as well. Uh, they'll be very, very white underneath. So there's no streaking going on underneath. So they will have a collar. Um, and that could be you know, a strong collar, it could be weak depending on where this bird is and changing the plumage. And the, uh, the wings will quite often, even at rest, show a lot of white. In particular, the males will show quite a bit of white. And in the secondaries and all through the um, um, coverts, the wing coverts. Uh, not as dramatic in the female, uh, but you will still see some white. And certainly when the birds are in flight, it's quite obvious you'll see a lot of white in the tail. And you'll see all of that white in the male wing. That panel is just all white here. Females will be less dramatic, but there's still quite a bit of white there. So all of those are easy features. Uh, if, if you see the birds in flight, it's, it's quite obvious. And even at rest, you know, if you do take a close look at that face, you'll see the very plain compared to the other birds that we're talking about today. So here's our Lapland longspur. It's the longspur that we expect to find in our area. And right off the bat, you can see that uh, again, it's, it's somewhat uh, more, it's more closely resembles the snow bunting bill than the uh, horned lark bill. But you can see that it has much, more defined facial markings. You can see that the ear coverts or auricular patch is surrounded um, by a dark margin. And so, you know, that outline along with st fairly strong malar stripes give a lot of character to this face compared to the other birds that we've talked about. And you can see that there is a lot of streaking going on. In this uh, image here, you can see that there is some buff, buff wash and that's usually confined to the upper breast and along the flanks. The belly itself will be quite white. And the uh, streaks will be in the upper breast and along the flanks. And you can see these are very bold, thick streaks, uh, very well defined. If we look at the wing, uh, you can see that the greater coverts have a lot of rufous in the edges of each one of those feathers. And so that's very diagnostic for the species, at least in our area. And you can also look at the tertials and you see that they have a wide um, edge of rufous there as well. When you see this bird in flight, you'll notice that there might be a fine edge of white on the uh, edges of the tail, but the wings will not have any patches of white at all. So um, that would be a characteristic to look for. You don't. You also do not get that extreme contrast that you see in horned larks. We do have one other uh, long spur that could potentially show up. Um, I, we don't have any records for it at Brimley Lab. I have not seen this bird in the county anywhere. Uh, but they do uh, migrate through the state. And there are records, I think, coming from places like uh, Kane County. There could be some DuPage records that I'm not, not aware of as well. But if we look at this bird, it does remind you quite a bit of that Lapland longspur. It does have the same kind of facial markings in it. It's just not as strong. Uh, but you can see that the uh, ear coverts are still you know, surrounded by a dark border. Um, but it's faint compared to what we saw in the uh, in the Lapland longspur. I do have a Lapland longspur down here, just you know, for comparison, you can see how strong that is. And the malar stripe is fairly strong here. It's uh, not quite as strong in these individuals. And certainly you can see that the uh, streaking that exists is much uh, more diffused than what we were seeing in our Lapland longspur. And in fact, the, uh, the buffy underparts can uh, include all of the underparts. It's from the throat all the way down to the uh, vent area. And this is all buffy. So you don't have the white belly that you do have on uh, Lapland longspur. And if we go one step further and we take a closer look at the wings, you can see that the greater covers here and the tertials. It's probably easier to see the tertials in this image. But you can see that they don't have that rich rufous that we were seeing on Lapland longspur. Even in this smaller picture down here, it's quite easy to see that there's a lot of rufous in the wing here and in, in those tertials. You're lacking that with Smith's longspur. It's just a pale brown that's edging the tertials and the uh, greater coverts. Um, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned in the facial pattern, uh, this bird does have a pale eye ring that uh, is not going to be found in the, uh, in the Lapland longspur. So there are a lot of differences. They're just very, very subtle. And so we need to take a close look at these birds. And that's what's difficult because the conditions we'll be viewing them in. So just as a review, uh, some of the features to remember, the horned larks are going to have that yellow throat, a black collar, and they do have a thinner build than what we would see like on a snow bunting or on a, uh, any of the longspurs. 
snow buntings have a plain looking face with smudges rather than uh, well-defined markings that we see in the long spurs. Uh, the underparts are very white. There is no streaking going on there. And uh, quite often, even in the closed wing, you'll see a lot of white showing up. In particular, the males will show a lot of white. Lapland and long spurs uh, do have well-defined facial markings. And they do show that a darker area surrounding the ear, ear coverts. Uh, they do have a buff wash on the breast and uh, the belly is all white. There is streaking on the underparts, but it's, uh, it's very well-defined streaking, very thick streaking, but it's confined to the um, upper breast and the flanks. And then do look at those wings to look for that rufous edging on the uh, greater coverts in the tertial. Smith's long spurs, on the other hand, are not, uh, they're not likely to be seen here, but we should be prepared to recognize them if they do show up. And the facial markings, again, will be very similar to what we see on Lapland long spur. However, they're just not uh, as strong and bold as what we see on Lapland long spur. There is a pale eye ring here to look for as well. And the underparts are going to be all buffy. From the throat all the way down to the vent, it'll be buffy in color. And it does have streaking, but it'll be very diffuse streaking compared to what we see on the lap of long spur. And the last thing to look for would be the uh, edges of the uh, greater coverts and the uh, tertials in the wing. And you'll see that you know, this is uh, more of a pale brown edging and the edges are not as thick as what we see on uh, lap of long spur where it's very, very rufous. -y. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.